that women are trying to be like men. Like, yeah. ni kama kujipigia kifua, like, what a man can do. Yeah, I can do. Ni can't carry a kuka. <laughs> Your bulb, ni a, a man hey. change. Like, yeah. being, there's, there's that softness, there's that tenderness of a woman that is so yeah, natural. Decided. That is so natural. Like, just be a lady. Uh, you don't have to fight to be a man, to be strong, to, you know, you can do all these things that a man can do. You can change that as much as it's what one acquire advice. But <laughs> to be to, now I'm going to and just say, no, no, me, that's, that's not <laughs> mine. That's <laughs> not mine. <laughs> yes, you get, like, there's, there's a, a feminine nature. <laughs> There's that <laughs> sacredness of you being a woman, that you have been called to be a woman. And they, there are things that a man cannot do that you can do. Mm. And that you can do that you cannot do that a man can do. Like just thrive in, your, in you being a woman. Yeah? And when people empower women in, in an organization and just leave them to thrive as women, and not try to transform them or mold them to be things that they are not. You get out. You get a lot out of a woman. Yes, <laughs> me, me, baby girl, and remain so. <laughs> Guys, what we make you guys? When I work it, I that would have been part of the question I wanted to ask you before this conversation ended. Mm -hmm. Right, I would I, I would have asked you. Is that is that statement that women say what a man can do I can also I can also do you know I, um, um, what do you think about it and then you just brought it out yeah. <laughs> me I know you can't so wh wh what do you think makes why are women not 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 all women but why a seg subsection of women not contented with being feminine what would you attribute it to to their childhood and how they have grown. Because, mm. um, and I'm speaking this on the side of being a counselor or something, mm. um, how a child is brought up between age one, zero to seven years really shapes, gives them identity. Mm. Yeah, how, we, how the parents treat them, what they see, what they are fed in school or at home, that is what they'll pick up. So a lady that saw their mother abuse their fathers, mm -hmm. abuse their uncle, talk ill about them, or even fight their husbands, that is the children's father. So if you see your mom, um, when, you grow, when you're growing up and then you see your mom doing that to your dad, you completely lose respect for men. <coughs> And that will happen subconsciously until you're 28 and you cannot respect a man. And now you want to be the man because you know how you ought to be treated. You get, like it comes from, what, what, what is this information that you received when you were a child? Like who taught you how to disregard women? Who taught you how to just hate being a woman? Maybe you are abused. Maybe you are, your opinions, your opinions never mattered in your home. And so you just felt like, when I'm taught, like, talk like, you are a lady, you should not be where men are. So all these ideas just keep building up, building up. And when you are old, when you are a bit older, you feel like, Okay, let me try be a man so that the society will hear me. Let me try voice out my, let me try dress like this so that I will be respected mm -hmm. and not abused. Because people think that you get raped because of how women dress. No, a rapist is a rapist. Whether you have dressed decently or not. Mm -hmm. it, is mm -hmm. their, it is their mindset. It's never about the one who is being, who has been abused. It is you. Your character is mm. pathetic, and that is where you took advantage of this young girl. So the girl grows up and thinks, mm. I have to look like a man because if I look like a lady, I have to look like a and now, I have to dress like a baggy baggy, and you end up calling them tomboys. 
It's very, it's very, it's just very, I don't know to say sad or what, what to call it, um, how the society is turning out. Now, in your opinion as a counselor, does the macho thing, I want to be like a man thing work for women? It does not work. That is not how God created us to be. Mm. Honestly, we, we have been created to be these tender human beings. There is power. We have power. We carry power as mm. women. We are powerful. And that is why God called us to, to submit, to be submissive uh, in homes. Because they, that's, submission is like power under control. Mm. That is what um, is said. And it's so true. That sub submission does not mean that you are weak. It means that you're powerful and you know your power and you know your place. But you choose to be humble enough, first of all, to follow God. And if you're married, to be humble enough to allow the man lead. So there's no point in life that the word of God will come to change and now accommodate the society. And, oh, now we can, we are transgenders. Okay, the word of God, let it twist mm. a bit. And now, okay, it is okay to do this. It is okay to look like this or choose. I, I feel, because that is what, <laughs> that is what uh, I hear people say and I see on social media. Like, there is what is called tri, tri-gender. Transgender. Or, no, there is tri-gender where you feel as a woman, as a man, and as both at the same time. Uh, there's really? something, yeah, there's, oh, there's wow. that that has come out. And you're like, <coughs> well, you, you must be a demon, but <laughs> like you cannot. I was assuming we didn't hear that. But, but you cannot, you cannot uh, mm -hmm. put yourself in such a state and just, at, I feel like, I feel like, no, you didn't create yourself. It is, you are a man or you are a woman. All these other things are just illusional. Illusion of yes. So we stick to the script. Yes. Oof. Let me take you back to Dreadly Sun. What are some of the challenges you're experiencing now? As a baker? Yes. Hey, the rice, the, the prices that are rising right now. Um, but I can say that there has been favor in my business. When you, when you realize that these are... Um, there's a change in the economy, and you just adjust the prices, and you talk to the clients. They are able to understand that, okay, if last year I was selling a kg at 2,000, I cannot sell it in June 2003 at 2,000 shillings. Sugar is imepanda, unga imepanda, you understand? So you just add your, your profit margin so that has been one of the <coughs> challenges, the recent challenges, but people are accommodative of the new prices. And I can say my business has great favor that I cannot explain. Yes. So that Dis run on the economy ahead yeah. Despite of the challenges, I cannot complain. I cannot complain. Yes. What would you tell? Um, a young woman trying to navigate through life. She's just started out, started, started out in life and you know, she's just figuring it out. What would you tell such a woman? Get a community. Get a community of either women or a church where you can plug in and be accountable. Again, I'll, I'll just bring it back to accountability. Because the, the more you stay alone or secluded, it, it drains you as a person, like people cannot see. You see when you're serving, for example, in church or you've volunteered in any organization, they are, like you come alive, they are your gifts that people can see and they are able to point out, oh, Shai, you're good at this, uh, try this tomorrow, try this. But when you have just, you're just on your phone the whole day scrolling on TikTok or Instagram and there's nothing you're doing, you're not showcasing your uh, talents or 
um, whatever you can do, your abilities out there. In a quicker, in a place where you think that everything will just come, come to you on a silver platter. But that is not how life works. I think th that is, that is a very bad mindset that the generation right now has. That one day too, like one hundred k will just be in your account. Like things will just happen while I'm on TikTok. You get. <laughs> But that is not how life is. I had that mentality a while back. There's a time I usually thought what? Someone will come out of somewhere and bless me with you. millions. Yes. Just give it. It doesn't work like that. Even the word of God tells us that. The one who is diligent in their work, the work of their hands will be blessed. So if there's no work in your hands, if there's nothing you're doing, you know, as a human being, you were created to work. Because people think that kazi itaishatua pa duniani, now that will be it. But there is work in heaven. Like that is the natural way that God has put life. There is, there is work that will be done even in heaven. So you have to put yourself in a place where you are growing as a person. You are adding a value to your community, your society. Do something that will serve another person. Again, servant, servanthood is a really precious um, thing to God. And you can start there by just serving people. You don't have to get paid. Because they, 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 this generation, Z, wanna talk anything that will bring in money. Mm -hmm. When I was, <laughs> let, me, let me share something. I didn't to employ someone, my baking assistant. So she sent uh, the word out there and people started applying. Do you know there is one of, and I know very sh for sure, any generation Z, I can text kwa email. Text kwa email. I'm saying that because I look like, hi, I've seen uh, you have a position. Evo <laughs> too. Okay. Like, there is no, there is nothing. <laughs> like, hi. <laughs> and there were two emails that were like, the same. And I'm like, these people are so entitled. Like, you just have to reply and chat on email. Like, I have time to just chat with this person <laughs> and get to know them. <laughs> and it, Yeah, I and mean, they're assuming you have time. Hey, You're looking for someone. I mean, I'm here, baby girl. Your job is to be It's a kupata too. And yeah. there's, 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 there's no effort. But if you really want to make a change and come out of that, the mindset of this gener generation right now, follow the word of God and how it says, work, God, God happened in laziness. God happened in laziness. Now, the word of God in a sema, that a little sleep and a little slumber, and poverty will come. So poverty is always on the move. In Angoja, tu konole mwenye ako very lazy, and it will come and pounce on you. You get. So put in the work. Read books. Ata maybe hauna place ya kubuluntia. But build yourself. Have knowledge <coughs> of different things. They, are, they don't have to be like in your field. But get to know. Get to know. Add knowledge to yourself. By the time you're getting an opportunity is coming, you will be ready for it. It's not the time that you now start um, gathering things beyond you so that you just get that job. No. The more you're faithful in the little things, when God brings big things, it will be a smooth ride. And my pastor says that that is what success overnight means. It's you've worked for long years and then one day an opportunity came and you jumped in. And now people think, oh, they, they, have, like, they have just come from nowhere and God has just blessed them. But it's been preparation and preparation is not wastage. Prepare yourself. Get out of that mindset of there's someone else who's coming to rescue me. There's, someone, there's just someone somewhere who will help me out of my laziness. It will, you'll be 30 and realize you've wasted a lot of your time on TikTok, a lot of your time on Instagram, as, long, as much as they are content creators. But you're not going to create content at 70. You're not going to create content at 82. When your grandchildren are there, you to create content to go to TikTok. It may not even be there. But what can you do? Look at the longevity of what you're doing right now. And how far can it go? Will it impact people? 
will it be relevant after 100 years? I am preaching the gospel because even after 100 years, the gospel will still be relevant mm -hmm. to people. Even to one generation from another, it will still be relevant. Yeah. Amazing. As we approach a roundup of this conversation, um, how do you think we can tackle our challenges as women from the point of strength? Um, most of the challenges come again um, in how you see yourself. I think I normally say that self-awareness is the greatest deliverance that you can do. You can go to many churches to be delivered generational curses, but when you are, you are not aware mm. yourself of, you know what, Sha, you sleep a lot, you sleep eight hours a day. <laughs> like there is that challenge and you call yourself out and you see you're lazy in that area or you're, you have strength in another area. When you're very aware of yourself, you're able to to receive corrections, to receive guidance, and even lead your life in a meaningful way. The other one is grit, to be resilient in anything. Challenges come, and this life will give you the hardest courses, let me tell you. Imagine if I give up now because it's 2017 and my parents have passed on, so my life has just imekwama. You know, there couldn't have been there are so many souls that have come to Christ because of me preaching qua streets. You understand? Me um, winning someone to Christ. But if I've, I could have given up and just say, you know, I'm depressed. I know grief is hard. I really know it's hard. And God is the solution again. But if I could have stayed at that state of self-pity and it's over and I'm a victim, there are so many lives that couldn't have, could never have been transformed if I didn't like take that burden to God again and leave it there. Don't take that burden to God and then when I talk and I'm zigo, when I end up, leave it there and then you keep going because God is always your backup. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I've had such a good conversation. I didn't even notice time with this song. Um, <coughs> what would you tell your younger self? Now we are done. We are winding we are up. Winding what would you tell up. your younger self? Um, that she will make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And um, the challenges will come in life, a lot of challenges. But you, your value and your worth is not in how <coughs> fast you bounce back from any challenge. It can take a year, it can take how many years, but that does not equal to your value and your worth as a person. Just because you are slow in one area does not define you. That your value, Sha, is in God. Your worth is in Jesus Christ and what he was able to do for you and pay that price for you. And there are opinions of people and I don't necessarily um, advocate to shut off opinions of people because these are the same people that you need to help you grow. People's opinions are good and may not be good. So take each and everything that you're told positively and see and get to know what works for you, what doesn't work for you and live without offense. Yes. Amazing, amazing. What's that one thing you can't leave the house without? As a girl. My pen, <laughs> my pen and my notebook. Okay. I love writing. I thought I was going to lip balm. I wish I would, <laughs> but I'm not that. Neza toka kwa nyumba bila makeup. But I love my pen. I feel siko complete without having a pen and a notebook. Yes, On or a book at least. Okay. Yes. On the road, are you a cheater or a tiger? <laughs> I'm a tiger. You love speed? Oh. Yeah. I love people who, who work araka raka. Yes. And myself as well. <laughs> nice. Yes. Use that camera to give us a parting shot and also tell us where we can find you on social media. Okay. Um, 
on social media, I'm um, Jolly Sun Creations. Should I say the work? Or? <laughs> Jolly Sun cre underscore creations on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, and my personal handle is Sha on a mission. So if you just click that, you will find me. And um, parting short, be real, authentic with your work and yourself. There's no, there's no award for fake. <laughs> there's no award for fake. Just be who you are and find your identity fully and wholly on God. He's the one who knows your end from the beginning. So stick to God, cling to him, even in the hardest and happiest days. Let God be the constant of your times. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so Welcome. much for coming. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for too. having this conversation with us. And for your time. Asante. Thanks a lot. Asante. Look forward to having you again and again and again. Thank you. That was uh, Sharon. Sharon Achino. She prefers to be called Sha. And she has given us a lot of insights, so much about women empowerment, the strength of a woman, and what she does as a person, and what she does in her work with Christ. Today's take home on strength of a woman is there's no award for being fake. Keep it real, keep it authentic, and be true to yourself. That is the strength of a woman.